What is up everybody? James Jackson here. I'm back again with a new video. I do tips and tricks of video and filmmaking industry. So if you like the content here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay updated on all the content we bring to this channel. All right, man, there's a lot of announcements that came out just in the past week, a lot of announcements, a lot of just new things coming out. So I just, I've been, so you may see me wearing the same shirt over and over again because I'm about to just, I needed to just go ahead and get these videos out as quick as, and start editing them as um, simple as possible. So uh, for, in terms of just like runtime, I apologize for that. But this one I was really excited because I did not come out of it until all of a sudden I started seeing all these videos pop out for it. But Blackmagic has now released a brand new firmware update for both the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which I have right here, and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which I don't have anymore. And for all you people that have been the Blackmagic Pocket 4K uh, owners and you've been thinking about 4K, 6K, what's man there's a lot of new things that have came to the 4k that have really elevated the game and kudos for black magic again for continuing to just say you know what we're not going to just just to hinder the 4k simply because of our higher updated model the 6k we're going to still deliver features if we can deliver it to them and they are just going absolutely bonkers with the B-Raw and the different things that we can, but we'll get to the 4K in a second. I want to talk about the updates that I got for the 6K because the 6K also got some updates, um, not as much as the 4K, but uh, what the camera did get, I am I'm super happy about. There's three things I sort of want to talk about that uh, that have been updates that I think are like really nice, good features to have with this camera, um, but. There's also one sort of disappointing feature that, or sort of update that came with it for both cameras. Uh, I'll knock with that one first. Um, the, really, it was like this. There were supposed to be improvements to the autofocus uh, system. Um, I don't know. I don't know what improvements did they make because honestly, I came in and I tested it out. Let me be clear. I wasn't expecting like continuous autofocus. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting maybe it's like it can snap better. You tap it, it'll just snap better and it just smoother transitions and honestly it, it wasn't even that much better it, it honestly it, it may have felt the same it might in fact at times it looked worse um for what it was delivering so i was kind of very very disappointed with that but there's some other things that i've been reading about that revolves around autofocus and the pocket cinema cameras but that is for another video. But let's talk about the things I do love about the updates that we got. First one, we got uh, Horizon Balance uh, Crosshairs, which is awesome. And I am so glad that they finally put that in there because it makes it so great to have those so you can actually you know, level out your lines to make sure you are, on, you are in a balance uh, plane when you're filming. So great feature to have. Another feature that I like, again, there's more than three, but these were the three that really stuck out to my, was they added some custom grids and custom like um, guides that you can do. So one, they gave us a one-to-one -one and a five, uh, four or five uh, uh, guidelines, which in my opinion is great because that's basically Instagram setup. So you can actually start trying to get either film stuff for IGTV or film stuff for um, for Instagram. You can just create some quick Instagram photos as well. So that's a wonderful thing to have. And I am so happy for that. But the big feature to me that came with both of these cameras is the fact that you can now when you punch in with your with your uh, focus for your critical focus, you can now it'll punch in two times like it always did. But now you can actually zoom in to eight times as well using your fingers and just like push zooming in that way, which is an amazing thing to have, especially when you're filming with the 6K. This this is probably one of the most important features for me in terms of the 6K because 
what this means is that it's so much easier now to get that critical focus and it's especially important when you're talking about dealing with 6k footage so do so having that is uh been a great great benefit uh i love it i'm so glad it's there so now i can it's so much easier to nail my focus with that but let's dive into the big features that have came specifically to the pocket 4k and uh basically they got a lot of the recording options that the 6k has had previously since its release which is they now have an anamorphic mode which is the big one which is i think is a really huge thing now it's not the same resolution it's not the 3.7k uh it is a 2.7k i believe um then they have a 2.6k crop mode that you could do up to 120 frames per second similar to the 2.8 that you could do in the 6k but the really cool features are the fact that now you have a new 4k record option where you use the 2 for 1 aspect ratio which crops the, the little bit of the top and bottom and now you can film up to 75 frames a second in 4k and then they offer another option uh, that allows you to shoot up to 80 frames a second that is crazy you can shoot up now to 80 frames per second uh on the pocket 4k man like i said they it's great that they have continued to push the boundaries with these cameras continue to go forward so kudos to black magic for that you know giving these more options with both of their cameras not just you know having just you know giving all the cool features to the the, the bigger brothers but also having them in the lower brother uh, i can't i i understand why you know it's i wish i could get 75 frames per second in my 6k um but i understand why it's probably just way too much processing power to handle at this point in time otherwise i think they definitely would have i'm still holding out hope that they'll put like 2.8k um pro res version in the in the 6k because that would be gold minded to me 2.8k and 3.7k in pro res on the, the 6k but it's great but to me this is a wonderful thing to have because now if you were to have either or or both on your shoots you can now way more easily match them together from one to the other either with the 241 aspect ratio or you want to do anamorphic or you want to do you know the higher frame rates but not as significant of a crop as like hd and you can still get some good high resolutions now you had options available so i know probably y'all asking and james you're probably regretting the day you sold that 6k and hell no i ain't regretting it not one bit you know i love the camera but you know i still love the 6k the 6k is a beast for what it is for what's capable it fits me better than what the 4k fits as all these great features have with the 4k and it's great um the, the 6k for me was a just a better fit and i'm actually going to make a video about it why i chose the 6k over the 4k because i know a lot of y'all ask why did i sell the pocket 4k why did i not keep it why did i just have both and i'll make a video about it and i'll just so explain of it but i just wanted to just go in and you know drop this knowledge for you guys that haven't if you have the pocket 4k or the pocket 6k uh if you haven't downloaded this new firmware definitely download the firmware even for the 6k where you don't get all the extra resolution and frame rate options that that eight times crop into the sensor is absolutely critical and you should absolutely get it so thank you for watching this video hopefully you enjoy it make sure to leave a like leave a comment below make sure to hit that subscribe button and until next time take care everyone